Bitcoin has retested 50,000 US dollars for the first time in over two years. What will Bitcoin do next? Let's go ahead and jump into the charts. Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Bitcoin has just retested the major $50,000 psychological level on the high time frame charts. We are going to be discussing the significance of this, what the high time frame charts are suggesting, the current macro trend, the short term price action, and the next expected move. We'll also be going over the total cryptocurrency and total altcoin market cap, discussing what is likely from a high time frame perspective. Before we get into it, smash that like button, hit that comment button, and subscribe to the channel. We post daily videos for Bitcoin focusing on the facts, the data, the technical, and the structural information. No hype, no BS, no emotion, pure raw TA. If that is the kind of content you are interested in, join us on Telegram. It is the third link down below. You'll get updates on charts, analysis, videos, educational posts, and news events to keep you in the loop of cryptocurrency with Bitcoin and the relevant economic news. If you are interested in taking your trading to the next level, you can join our VIP group information in the pinned comment of the free channel. You'll get access to trading setups with exact entries, exact targets, exact stop losses, trade justification, exclusive analysis, and so much more, including access to our group chats, our general chat, our trading chart and education chat, our help, our news, our trade setup, and our video chat. If you're interested in getting access again, you can contact us in the pinned comment. Let's go ahead, guys, and dive into the video. Starting on that market data, 24-hour volume is up a significant 75%, sitting at a total of $140 billion. 24-hour liquidations are up to nearly 200 million. This is 68% up in terms of percentage change on the last 24 hours. With 135 million coming from short positions as Bitcoin continues upwards and 64 million coming from long positions. A really quick brief look at the price action. We can see a lot of people were taking early shorts at this position yesterday expecting a correction. We told you in yesterday's video, we had every validation for strength. We had the daily momentum positive. We had the current trend flip positive and we had the price break over 48,000 a major high time frame resistance. Again, strength from momentum, okay, structure from the 48k break, and trend direction from the overall uptrend present on the price action. Three out of three validations to suggest overall strength. We mentioned yesterday, unless we fail to hold above 48,000, we would be expecting a continuation upwards, which is exactly what we saw. So we saw a lot of people jump into early shorts and those people have now been liquidated. So moving on, and we'll come back to Bitcoin in today's video, the DXY, again, moving in an overall uptrend, we don't have too much time left as we have the CPI data coming out in just over 12 hours. And the CPI data is going to make a massive directional impact on the DXY. Bullish data for CPI will result in a correction for the DXY. Bearish data for CPI will result in a rally for the DXY. Depending on the extent of the bullish or bearish direction will likely determine the significance of the impact it would have on the DXY. If we do see a null event, meaning no change, it is unlikely we are going to see any Jurassic volatility on the DXY besides short-term fluctuation. Okay, if we do see a breakdown of this trend line, that would validate a move to our 102 to 103 level. If we break down from this horizontal support, we can see a correction back to our main area of liquidity, which is going to be this 100 to 105. This will be a massive tick for the bulls if it does occur. Looking toward the upside, while we are in an uptrend, we are expecting the trend to continue at least to 105. Again, if we do get that data come out today, that could direct, uh, massively impact the direction on the short term and thus, we are more in tune to waiting for that data to predict where this is going to go. Looking at the S&P 500 and of course the Dow Jones, more or less the same thing over here. We are breaching these highs 
overall looking fantastic while it is sitting above 5,000. We've had a massive, massive move toward the upside. A break of that $5,000 level of support could result in a short-term correction develop. It doesn't matter, provided we remain above 4,800, we are going to be above this massive area of support and that would act as a launch pad for a continuation even if we do suffer a short-term correction. Overall, looking fantastic. Moving over to the Dow Jones, we did see a retest of 39,000, that target of ours. Again, a breach or break of 39,000 will likely result in a continuation upwards to the main psychological resistance at the $40,000 mark. Until then, resistance is resistance until not, and especially moving into CPI data, any significant shift in that data could result in the price action moving in an unexpected direction. And thus, we should be cautious moving into that data. Enough about that, guys. In today's video, we're going to go ahead and start on the total cryptocurrency market cap, discussing what is happening on the charts and our next expected move. We'll also be taking a look at altcoin performance in comparison to Bitcoin and in comparison to the total currency market cap to discuss the probabilities of altcoins starting to move more aggressively or when that should occur. We'll then jump over to the macro chart, speaking about the daily breakout, the retest of 50,000 and the momentum shift, and then finish up on the short-term charts discussing what to expect next. So before we get into it, a quick word from BitGet and BingX. I wanted to briefly interrupt today's video to discuss the two exchanges we use on this channel, BitGet and BingX. So which exchange should you sign up to? If you look to the right hand side of the screen, you're going to see the list of differences in relation to KYC requirements and the countries these exchanges offer services to. The first link down below being the BitGet link and the second link down below being the BingX link. No matter which link you sign up to, you're going to get up to 15% discounts on your trading fees, up to 5,000 US dollars in trading rewards, and of course, you'll get access to every single MegaWow exclusive bonus campaign we run on these exchanges. Alongside that, BitGet and BingX are incredibly similar. They are both ranked top 10 in terms of trading volume. They both have extensive liquidity pools and market pairs offering up to 125x leverage. And most importantly, they both offer protection funds for the users to protect you against any third party hacks. So get started now and support the channel by clicking the links below. Thanks for listening. Okay team, let's go ahead and dive into the chart. So like we said, a retest of 50,000 has occurred, a pretty significant moment for Bitcoin. And I remember the first time Bitcoin broke 50,000, there was euphoria, there was hype, and now we're touching 50,000 again, and the space still feels dead quiet. And you know, it doesn't feel significant, which is crazy to think, and just goes to show how early we really are in this cycle. Last time we touched 50,000, everyone was hyped, everyone was excited, everyone was thinking about it, every second person I met on the street was talking about Bitcoin, and now it is a ghost town still. The cycle is still early. Looking at the total cryptocurrency market cap, we did tell you a break of this level of resistance at 1.6 trillion would result in a continuation upwards toward our next resistance, we are still looking for this $2 trillion mark. Overall, the total cryptocurrency mark cap looks fantastic. There is almost nothing I can say bearish about it. If we eventually and somehow break back down, we would need to lose this low at 1.6 trillion, this area of support for this chart to flip back bearish. Even if we see a correction, that would still be considered a high time frame, healthy pullback. It is only if we lose this level, that is when we would expect a high time frame correction and the bears to take control. The probability of that is very, very slim. Moving over to the total altcoin markup. If a lot of people ask me, whale, are you buying altcoins? If you've been paying attention to the channel, guys, we told you we started buying altcoins when we broke out of this consolidation pattern, which we're in for like two years. We broke out just in that October period and we started buying. I've got up nearly seven figures in altcoin accumulations, and I've been upwardly accumulating with the price action. Overall, altcoins look fantastic, provided we remain above this 460 billion low. You can see this is our sell side liquidity right over here, a area where we could act as a launch pad for a continuation upwards. If we do continue upwards, we are looking for a retest of this $640 billion range, this red zone, which is going to act 
as the dead cap bounce low prior to that bounce back in February 2022. Historically comparing altcoin performance to Bitcoin performance or just general, yeah, general Bitcoin Ethereum performance, we can see that altcoins do take some time before they start really moving. And we'll show you an example over here with the Bitcoin chart. So let's go ahead and bring up Bitcoin really quickly. So we'll go on the Brave New Coin Liquid Index chart. This should be on a weekly time frame. We can see altcoins here on the other side. We can see a log scale. And by the time altcoins really start to move upwards, and you know, we're looking at something around over here, this level over here upwards, this significant rally for altcoins. By the time Bitcoin really starts, or should I say altcoins really start to move upwards, you can see where Bitcoin already is. It's already completed that large rally toward the upside. So during this entire rally for Bitcoin toward the upside, altcoins are really just getting started on their move. It's only once Bitcoin fully corrects after that initial rally in the bull market, that altcoins see that large explosion in price. And we've said this for a very long time. Bitcoin will move up significantly before mo most altcoins even break out of their accumulation phases. So are you late? You're not late. It is still early. It doesn't mean FOMO win. It means watch for high time frame levels, try buy your corrections, buy your supports, set your stop losses, and pay attention to the macro charts. Let's go ahead and jump over to Bitcoin. So as we said, guys, Bitcoin has retested 50,000. Now we did say in yesterday's video, a break of 48,000 would send us to our next target at 52,000, which we do still stand by. 52,000 is going to be that next high time frame target based on our volume ranges. Our volume ranges being our VIPB. Again, we use the VIPB, we use volume ranges to identify areas of support and resistance on the chart. So our next area of logical resistance that we see on this range is going to be the $52,000 region. The reason, reason why we say that is because we have a divot here in the VRPV, which represents an area of low historical resistance or an area of low liquidity, generally where new supports and resistance are actually developed from. But, there is something we didn't mention, and that is the $50,000 psychological level. Generally, these whole numbers, 50,000, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, et cetera, et cetera, these whole numbers are acting or act as psychological levels on the chart. People generally place orders, whether it be sell orders or buy orders at these psychological levels. So 50,000 is going to be acting as a short-term, psychological trigger point between the $48,000 resistance, okay, now support, and the $52,000 target. Does that really change anything? Looking at the chart, it doesn't. Looking at the daily chart, we can still see every validation we saw is still intact. We've had the breakout of the RSI over here. Again, the RSI visible range, so in the range of price action within this area of price action gain. You can see the visible range of drawn out in a box. Within this range of price action, we can see momentum was moving toward the downside. We've had bearish momentum the entire time. Only up until recently did we flip positive, and that positive shift resulted in a significant rally for Bitcoin. And that rally took us over this $48,000 resistance, flipping this area as a high time frame support. And thus, we would expect Bitcoin to continue to $52,000 before ever losing 46. This area is now an area of support and support is support until it is not. You have to trust support. The upside potential gain, okay, let's go ahead and show you. The upside potential gain is significantly greater than the downside potential risk. The downside potential risk is a stop loss below 46,000. The upside potential gain is however high Bitcoin could potentially go in the coming months. So it would be unwise to assume that the, uh, that the logical direction for Bitcoin right now would take us under 46K while 48K remains as support. So let's go ahead and jump over to the short term charts. What we can see, of course, is a few things. We've got our $52,000 target aimed out over here, okay? We've got our high side liquidity at 
$49,000. And then we have our lower ranges of support as well as our current uptrending diagonal trend line. What we would expect for Bitcoin to do is a continuation up to $52,000 as expected, provided the $48,000 level is able to maintain our support on the daily chart. A daily breakdown of 48,000 would indicate that we have seen deviation above 48,000 and could potentially result in a short term correction. Here's the key thing a short term correction towards the current uptrend. Where is the current uptrend confidence point? 46,000. So moving back to the daily, 46,000 being the range low of the current high time frame support. Meaning, even if we see a correction to 46,000, it is wise to assume that a correction to 46,000 would not indicate a high time frame reversal, but a healthy pullback and healthy consolidation in the current uptrend. So guys, we'll go ahead and keep it short and sharp. Right now, Bitcoin is looking strong. As we said yesterday, there is absolutely nothing to suggest there is weakness on the chart. All bearish exhaustion is being absorbed and flipped back positive. High time frame resistances that have stood for years are starting to break upwards. And the narrative, which is the main driver of the bull market, which is the halving event, has not yet even occurred. So the market is either doing one or two things. It is preparing for the bullish narrative, okay, and then we're going to see a correction come the halving event, or it is, again, moving faster than expected. And just because we are moving faster than expected, doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. And it doesn't mean the four year cycle is broken. Remember, the four year cycle is simply but a date range trend. It tells you nothing about structural levels. All these structural levels I have put into the chart. Again, these levels we have been discussing before anyone. We've been discussing them way back over here. These $32,000, $48,000 trend line dead cap bounce high. All these levels we created, all these levels we've been discussing have been overlaid onto the four-year cycle. They are not part of the four-year cycle. The four-year cycle is a date range trend between tops and bottoms, between accumulation and bull market, between bull market and bear market. Provided a price action enters into a bull market within that bull market phase and continues, the four-year cycle is valid. The only thing at the moment that would break the four-year cycle would be a breakdown on the monthly chart below 32,000. At the moment, everything is looking fine. Let's go ahead and actually wrap it up on the four-year cycle and the monthly charts. A lot of people ask me, well, when do you expect the top to be in? When do you expect to be taking profits? Hypothetically, if the four year cycle plays out, hypothetically, if the bull run does occur, what are you expecting? There's two ways I'm looking at it. Number one, I'm looking at it from the date range trend perspective. And this is going to be based on the days between tops and highs, tops and bottoms. So we have days between tops and bottoms. On average, we see, and we have seen in the prior two cycles, the first year cycle and the second year cycle, the days between the bottom and the all-time high is 1,064 days. We saw that once in the first year. In the second year, we saw that twice. Again, 1,064 days between the low and the top. The exact same amount of days. We're not making it up. It is quite literally the exact same amount of days. If we go from the all-time high to the bottom, it is again the exact same amount of days, 364 days. So if we're going on a days between top and bottom pattern and we apply that to the future, that would indicate a top on the 6th of October 2025. So that is our first method. We are watching for that date. However, due to the potential early bull run that could be triggering, it is hard to say for sure if this data point is going to fluctuate or deviate from the current trend. And thus we have another method we are watching. This is going to be what we commonly trade as, as a momentum method. When we see the RSI break over the 80 point on the monthly, after 7 to 10 weeks, within that 7 to 10 week period after the 80 on the RSI break being broken, we will be taking profits. Why do I say that? If we look at when that RSI breaks, 
and we draw the bars from the point of which the RSI break on the monthly to the all-time high, okay? From the point of which the RSI broke on the monthly to the all-time high. So the first point I'm taking, just to really show you, is the entry point upon the breakout of the RSI. And the second point, which is a point two, is going to be based on the monthly price action high. So the break above the RSI, second point, the monthly price action high here, okay? At the break of the RSI, and then the second point is the monthly price action high reflected on this chart. What we can see is, sorry, this one is actually incorrect. What we can see is we have 10, 10, and 7. That indicates a 10, 10, 7. So we are going to be looking to take profits between 7 to 10 bars after, okay, after the RSI has been broken above the 80. So we wait for the RSI to cross on the monthly. We wait 7 to 10 bars, which is 7 to 10 months. And between that 0.7 and that 0.10, that will be the golden pocket for the top to print as well as a profit-taking zone. According to this chart, that actually puts the profit-taking zone slightly earlier than expected according to the date range trend. I believe it puts it around June to October according to the date range trend 2025. Anyway guys, maybe we'll elaborate on this another day. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you have a fantastic day. Watch the short-term price action, guys. Pay attention to it. Make sure you're aware. Again, we have been telling you this for so long. You can watch the channel. All of the evidence is there. We told you guys the bottom was in a 16.5K. We've been accumulating. We told you a monthly candle close over 32,000 results in a break to 48. We're telling you now, again, a break of 48,000 results in a move to 52 and then eventually to an all-time high. If you are not accumulating, if you have not been buying, do not panic, okay? Take your step back and start looking for areas of which would be acceptable for your next entry points, okay? Thanks for watching. Catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.